Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and in this video, I am going to teach you how to take a voltage reading with a multimeter. Now this video is episode number six in a series of videos where I'm teaching you all the basic electrical skills you'll need to be able to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now I've already talked about how to cut wire, strip wire, crimp wire, and a few other topics, and I think adding some basic multimeter concepts to your arsenal of skills at this point is a really good idea to make wiring your system safer and troubleshooting your system easier. Now this is a multimeter. There are probably a thousand different types of multimeters and brands and stuff like that out there. And for the most part, at this basic level like we're covering today, they all do the same thing. This multimeter was about 25 bucks and it's likely not as good as a Klein or a Fluke, but if you're ready to drop 150 bucks on a multimeter, you're probably not looking for videos on how to take voltage readings with a multimeter. And for the rest of us, this $25 version will serve our purposes very nicely. I'll leave a link to this particular multimeter in the description below. So what do we need to know about this multimeter to take a voltage reading? Well, here's your display screen, and here's your settings dial, and here are the test leads. And there's a lot more buttons and features on this particular multimeter uh, that we're not going to talk about today because they don't really pertain to taking a voltage reading. So now that you've been properly acquainted with your multimeter, let's get the multimeter ready to take a voltage reading. I'm going to put my leads in their proper place. This one's color-coded, red for input or positive, and black for common or negative. And to take a voltage measurement, you're going to turn your dial to the position with the V with the straight and squiggly lines. The V stands for voltage, the squiggly line stands for AC voltage, like a standard household wall outlet, and the straight line stands for DC voltage, like a battery or a solar panel. So this V with both the straight and squiggly lines on it means that it will read both AC and DC voltage. Now let's actually take a voltage reading. So I'm going to put my negative probe on the negative battery terminal and the positive probe on this positive battery terminal. Now since this is a 12 volt battery, a reading of anywhere from 12 volts to 14 volts is pretty common. Now what if we switch the probes and have what's called reverse polarity? Now there's not much difference, except that you'll get a negative voltage reading, which just means that your positive and negatives are switched. And this won't hurt your multimeter, by the way. And this concept is really important to understand because this is how you can ensure that when wiring your components together that you're not connecting in reverse polarity. Which reverse polarity means connecting the positive to the negative and the negative to the positive on the same device. Now if you do wire something with reverse polarity, best case scenario, the device would run in reverse or it wouldn't work. Uh, worst case scenario means you would burn up the internals of the device you're trying to power. How about another example? Solar panels. Sometimes it's tough to tell which is the positive wire and which is the negative wire on the back if they're not marked. And although the male MC4 connector is usually the positive, I like to make damn sure. So to find out, I'm going to touch the copper connector on each MC4 connector with my multimeter probes to see what it tells me. And it looks like I'm getting a negative reading, which means that my negative multimeter probe is touching the positive wire coming out of the solar panel. So this one is the positive wire. And you can verify this by switching the multimeter probes and going positive to positive and negative to negative gets rid of that minus sign on the multimeter display. Now you can check the voltages of all kinds of stuff using the same method. AA batteries, AA batteries in series, DeWalt drill batteries, and even household outlets. Now let's talk about safety for a second. Obviously messing with electricity is dangerous, you know that. The main piece of safety advice I can possibly offer is don't touch the metal parts of the multimeter probe whenever you are measuring voltages. It may not matter too much when you're testing lower voltages like a 12 volt battery, but if you stick these probes into a 120 volt household outlet while you're touching the metal part of the probe, it's going to shock you in the exact same way that it would if you were plugging in like a, a plug into an outlet and was touching one of the prongs. Super ouch. Now generally, humans can start to feel electricity at 30 volts. Uh, 50 to 60 volts is generally considered dangerous. Last time I touched 80 volts coming out of a series wired solar panel array, it felt like I got bit by a horsefly or stung by a bee or something like that. Now 120 volts from a household outlet really hurts and can be considered quite dangerous. Anything above that just gets increasingly more dangerous. So understanding that, coupled with knowing how to use a multimeter to take a voltage reading, will allow you to be 100% sure of what level of voltage that you're dealing with so that you can take appropriate safety precautions like turning off the power, or covering up the solar panels, or disconnecting the solar panels before you're working on something. Just treat electricity with respect. Always treat everything as if it's powered up. And that wraps up this video. I'm glad we covered this topic because next week I'm going to teach you how to wire solar panels in series. 
Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you'd share it with somebody or a group who you think could benefit from it, and leave the video a thumbs up. Drop any questions you've got in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.